What love? What? What? Young love. Young. Young. Dirty. Dirty. Hey. Hey. Five in the day. Block boy. I'm coming up uh, on the rough side, and y'all niggas still hate going off that pride. But still, I strive, this flesh is occupied. Two words you rarely hear from me is that I tried. Voice of creativity and right inside. Y'all niggas ain't ready. Watch how y'all hide, and watch how I glide right across this plane. Move some gravity around. I don't need no lane, it must be hard to get. What up, though? Thanks for watching the Killers RTV. Okay, I've been doing, I started the series The Misleaders. Now, what I'm about to end up doing is that I, I got to bring some balance. I just can't be putting people out there and every video be just terrible, terrible. So, it's going to be a, a two double series. You know what I'm saying? So with the misleaders, I'm going to bring you. For every misleader I bring you, I'm going to bring you somebody who you probably haven't heard of, who they definitely didn't promote. So basically, when I bring you your mislead, I'm going to bring you the reciprocal <coughs> of that misleader as well. So with that being said, let's get into it. Okay, the first person I have in our series of the real leaders is none other than Henry McNeil Turner, born in 1834, died in 1915. Henry McNeil Turner was for many years the leading advocate of black migration to Africa as the only permanent solution to the problem of race discrimination in the United States. As Bishop of the African <coughs> Methodist Episcopal Church, AME, Turner was a highly vocal and vehement critic of the white America's continued oppression of its citizens, and he became the natural heir to the 19th century abolitionist Frederick Douglass as chief spokesman. Okay, we got to pause right there. He didn't become the natural heir. He actually was the, the real truth. He was the truth. He was really out here. He wasn't playing. He wasn't in it to get a white woman he wasn't in it to to get any money he was really in it to save his people he wasn't the slave that found slavery so bad and so fucked up that he ran away and made his escape but then felt like everybody else could wait in bondage for 20 more years while he slept with a white chick and this is no disrespect or nothing against white people or white females or nothing like that. It's just the fact of what happened. So, it, it was a lot of things that, that went down and that happened with Turner. Like, one of the main things that he preached is that we got every right to believe that, that God is black. And it was a number of different reasons why he preached that and he felt that I ain't, I'm not saying that was right or wrong but at the end of the day God the essence of the creative force in my opinion can't be described as human as human at all let alone a denomination of human white black red anything like that but you know what I mean as the centuries grow and we, we learn and we understand but yeah, um, Bishop Turner, he was the truth. Um, it was a Hayden Ted, Tidman compromise. Like, after the war was over and we were supposed to be getting our 40 acres and a mule, they did a little compromise with the presidency and they, like, rescinded all the, the troops out of the Republican states. But they ain't telling you that these were black Republican states and we had bread. And, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So... After they rescinded all that, it kind of like diverted our 40 acres and the mule. Don't think it wasn't paid out. The spoils of war was paid. You just didn't get it. Somebody got your 40 acres and the mule. You just didn't get it. And this is one of the main things that um, Bishop Turner used to speak on. 
And no disrespect to Marcus Garvey because he going to get an episode in one of the real leaders as well. But Bishop Turner sent more people back to Africa using his bread and his knowledge and, 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 and his 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 pull than, than, than Harvey did. And that was real. And that was before Harvey. So, I mean, Garvey, I'm sorry, forgive me. But that ain't, it, it's not to weigh it out, but it's just to show you that the things that, that, that they put in the paper, the thing that they promote, the people who they promote, are always supporting an agenda that is not in your best interest. That's one of the reasons why you probably never ever heard of Bishop Turner. He actually did a thousand times over more than Frederick Douglass could have ever did. Frederick Douglass did the, the same thing that, that Bishop Turner did to put us ahead. Frederick Douglass put in that much work to put us back. So, it's just real. They told y'all everything that was hidden gonna come was going to come to light. And it's coming. Now, the label, he, listen at the labels, black nationalists, reparationalist, I can't even pronounce it right, but shit, and he was a minister. But those reparations that we were supposed to get, the 40 acres and the mule, they got, the, the spoils was paid out, we just never got them. And this was one of the head people that was in line trying to get it for us. At the same time, Frederick Douglass was was writing people saying that we learned from being slaves and we continue we need to continue with the segregation and they the and and as Frederick Douglass was telling the people who we was trying to get our our, our rights and shit from that they were superior and we were growing just from being their slaves. This man was doing his thing. And he was really fighting. Like, even before Marcus Garvey, he sent more people back to Africa than Marcus Garvey. So I'm going to read something of that, that I got online from. Um, it's a lot of different little sources. Of course, they all got their own opinions. And some of them not all the way forthcoming. However... This one was pretty on point for the most part, so I'm going to read this one to you. Henry M. Turner was 31 years old at the time of the emancipation. Turner was born in 1834 in Newberry Courthouse, South Carolina, to free black parents Sarah Green and Hardy Turner. The self-taught by the age of 15, Turner worked as a janitor at a law firm in Abbeville, South Carolina. The firm's lawyers noted that his abilities and help with his education. However, Turner was attracted to the church, and after being converted during the Methodist religious revival, decided to become a minister. He became a licensed minister in 1853 at the age of 19. Turner soon became an evangelist traveling as far as New Orleans and Louisiana. By 1856, he married Eliza, Peacher, the daughter of a wealthy African-American house builder in Columbia, South Carolina. The couple had 14 children, but only four of them survived into adulthood. Damn. In 1858, Turner entered Trinity College in Baltimore, Maryland, where he studied Latin, Greek, Hebrew, and theology. Two years later, he became the pastor of the Union Bethel Church in Washington, D.C. Turner cultivated friendships with important Republic Congress <coughs> congressional figures, including Ohio Congressman Benjamin Wade, Pennsylvania Congressman Thaddeus Stevens, and Massachusetts Senator Charles Summer. Turner had already become a national figure in 1863 at the age of 29, when he was appointed by President Lincoln to the position of chaplain in the Union Army. Turner was attached to the 1st Regiment, U.S. Colored Troops, making him the first African-American chaplain in the history of the United States Army. After the Civil War, Turner returned to Georgia and quickly became active in the Reconstruction era politics. 
1867, he organized for the Republic Party in Georgia and followed year was elected a delegate to the Georgia State Constitutional Convention. In the same year, he was also elected to the Georgia State Legislature. Legislature excuse me. Although 27 African Americans were elected to that body, a coalition of white Democrats and Republicans declared the African American members disqualified and refused to sit them. President Ulysses S. Grant appointed Turner postmaker of Maker, Georgia. He was forced to resign in a few weeks under the pressure from local Democrats. The U.S. Congress intervened and allowed Turner to reclaim his legislative seat in 1870, but he was not re-elected in the act election <clears throat> marred followed by fraud. Turner abandoned politics and moved to Savannah, Georgia, where he served as pastor of St. Philip's AME Church. In 1876, he was appointed president of Morris Brown College in Atlanta. Four years later, he was appointed a bishop in the African Methodist Episcopal, Episcopal Church. Turner became the first AME bishop to ordain a woman, Sarah Ann Hughes, to the official of deacon. He also wrote The Genius and the Theory of Methodist Politi <coughs> Politi in 1885 as a guide to policies and practice of the AME church. So the, the article is really, really long and, and it, it, it states sources and everything as well. But this is the stuff I swear I've never heard of Turner before I got grown. They never preached about him at, 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 at as church, school, nowhere. And, and he was a congressman at the time where there was still slaves. He was in the Congress. So, you know what I'm saying? Why he wasn't pushed. Some things to think about. But I salute this man. I, I appreciate the service that he did for us. Whether we showed that we took advantage of it or not. Or whether we was listening or not. He did spend and dedicate his life to the betterment of us. And he deserved the acknowledgement. Not somebody who sold us out. And I just found out. He, his ancestors still out here selling us out. Taking our money. Putting us light years behind where we supposed to be. So we thank him dearly for his service. And these is the people who should be broadcasted and taught about in school thanks for watching what love what what yo love yo dirty dirty hey hey for the day block boy meet up with me I'm coming up, uh, on the rough side, and y'all niggas still ain't going off that pride, but still I strive, this flesh is occupied, two words you rarely hear from me, it's that I try, force of creativity is right inside, y'all niggas ain't ready, watch how y'all hide, and watch how I glide, right across this plane, move some gravity around, I don't need no lane, it must be hard to gain, cause it ain't shit to lose, I've been stumped, stabbed,